I don't think you can ever leave home. Hmm. You take it with you. It's in the follicles, your hair follicles. It's in, in the bend of your knees, the arch of your, sh your foot. I don't know. You can't leave home. Hmm. You just take it and you can rearrange it. Home is a place where I belong that belongs to me and I belong to it. It provides stability, order, joy, comfort, all of those things. Home is so, in, is so important because people are there to keep you grounded mm -hmm. and they help me to keep things in perspective. You can't ever not be proud of where you're from. For most African Americans, at the turn of the century, Home was still the South. That was the geographical legacy of slavery. But all that changed in the Great Migration, when African Americans began moving north to cities, fleeing racism and searching for economic opportunity, first by the hundreds, then by the thousands. John Johnson was among those black people who fled the South. In 1933, when he was only 15 years old, he left Arkansas and moved north to Chicago. Less than a decade later, he founded the Johnson Publishing Company, creating Ebony Magazine, Jet Magazine, and other magazines that now reach millions of readers. Mr. Johnson passed away in 2005, but his daughter, Linda Johnson Rice, might be his greatest legacy. Linda is the CEO of Johnson Publications today. Linda, thank you so much for agreeing to be in the series. Are you kidding me? Thank you. I loved your father, and your father yeah. was one of my heroes. So, fantastic man. He left his hometown in 1933, and he didn't return for 53 years. Correct. Did he ever talk about why it took him so long to go back? You know, I think he felt that there was no opportunity for him there, and that the racism was so strong there that his memories just weren't good. Mm -hmm. He just said, you know what, I left there, that's my past, that's, you know, a, a, a country place that, you know, I acknowledge I'm from, but I've moved on. And I think what happened with my father was his mother, Gertrude Johnson Williams, who really saw in him a great deal of potential. Mm -hmm. And she recognized that that potential could not be fulfilled in Arkansas City. Ironically, your father says that it was not having access to a high school education that ultimately led to his success. That's what drove him out of Arkansas City. <laughs> <laughs> That's what brought him to Chicago. I'm sure he's eternally grateful <laughs> that there was no high school there because he probably would have ended up staying there. And as he uh, used to tell me, he said, you know, I probably would have ended up being the minister in, uh, in uh, Arkansas City because that was the best job then. Once John Johnson left Arkansas City, he never looked back. Yet he carried those Arkansas days with him his entire life. It was a central part of the stories he told his family and of who he was as a person. For many of us, however, the details of our family histories have been lost, obscured over time. When you were growing up, did your family talk about its past, your family past? No. Mm -hmm. No. Or the African-American history? Did no. Did they talk about that? No. And I noticed something in your first series. You pointed that out with some of the people that you talked about. Right. That their parents, like my parents, mm -hmm. they really didn't talk about it. But why do you think that's true, Tom? I don't know. You're the, his you're the historian. <laughs> why, why are our parents like that? Mm -hmm. um, is it that they were ashamed uh, and they didn't want to think about, you know, where they came from? Tom Joyner is a superstar in the world of radio. He reaches an audience of 8 million listeners each day from his studio in Dallas, Texas. Tom's family has deep roots in Alabama, where his family faced many obstacles, especially attempting to get an education. Slavery had deprived our people of this basic right, but opportunities in Alabama 
remain severely limited. Around the First World War, for every dollar spent on a white child, every one dollar spent on a white child, two cents was spent on a black child. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. So since the state wasn't going to educate black people, private missions, churches, such as the Presbyterian Church, started schools. The Presbyterian Church established mission schools all through the South to help bridge this gap, including several schools in Wilcox County, Alabama, in the 1880s. Tom's grandmother, Nettie Stanback, taught at one of these mission schools. Tom's great-grandfather, Isaac Dumas, a former slave, was raised here. 